Be free from grief, not through insensibility like the irrational animals, nor through want of thought like the foolish, but like a man of virtue by having reason as the consolation of grief. You are but an appearance and not absolutely the thing you appear to be. Remember that you ought to behave in life as you would at a banquet. Other people's views and troubles can be contagious. Don't sabotage yourself by unwittingly adopting negative, unproductive attitudes through your associations with others. Some things are in our control and others not. With every accident, ask yourself what abilities you have for making a proper use of it. Circumstances don't make the man. They only reveal him to himself. Let no man think that he is loved by any who loveth none. Keep your attention focused entirely on what is truly your own concern. And be clear that what belongs to others is their business and none of yours. You are a little soul carrying a corpse. Most of what passes for legitimate entertainment is inferior or foolish and only caters to or exploits people's weaknesses. Death is nothing terrible. Else it would have appeared so to Socrates. But the terror consists in our notion of death, that it is terrible. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not but rejoices for those which he has. No man is free who is not master of himself. What is the first business of one who practices philosophy? To get rid of self-conceit, for it is impossible for anyone to begin to learn that which he thinks he already knows. First say to yourself what you would be and then do what you have to do. Since it is reason which shapes and regulates all other things, it ought not itself to be left in disorder. We should not have either a blunt knife or a freedom of speech, which is ill managed. Demand not that things happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do, and you will go on well. You can be invincible 
if you enter into no contest in which it is not in your power to conquer. Reason is not measured by size or height, but by principle. Who are those people by whom you wish to be admired? Are they not these whom you are in the habit of saying that they are mad? What then? Do you wish to be admired by the mad?